I don't think the, and I don't mean to cut you off, I don't think the mainstream media and society as a whole really understands uh, the impact that uh, alopecia areata, uh, universalis and totalis has on people. You know, it, it could be a ticking time bomb for anybody. Anyone, it, it could affect anyone at any time. It's not just children who are being born with this uh, d- disease. And I have known uh, people have contacted us through the American Hair Loss Association who are 45 years old. They didn't have, you know, uh, common androgenetic alopecia. And then all of a sudden, they lost half their head of hair uh, overnight. And they don't even know where to turn. And sadly, uh, the treatments, while there are uh, a few treatments that seem to be quasi-effective, maybe in the short term, um, in, in many instances, the treatment itself can be worse than the cure, so to speak. And a lot of people spend a lot of time, there's a lot of heartache, uh, 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 and, and even out of pocket, uh, you know, money out of pocket to try to treat their children, try to treat themselves. In the end, they usually lose the battle. This is the first time in history that this type of alopecia has ever been successfully treated. And you did it with a, a medication that's already FDA approved. Right. Tell me how, you, tell me how that happened. So... Um, so, uh, my patient, uh, was referred, um, before he was my patient, was referred, uh, to me for the treatment of his psoriasis. Right. Um, and, you know, I walk into, I walk into the exam room, uh, and, and indeed he has psoriasis, but, but, you know, the first thing you notice is, is, um, absent eyebrows, absent eyelashes. Um, yeah, and most people, and, they, they don't even know. They think, you know, uh, okay, the, people think of hair loss as, um, you know, just uh, your, your typical androgenetic uh, alopecia, typical male pattern baldness. But when people see somebody with alopecia universalis, it can be shocking. And then imagine this kid having to walk through life, not only dealing with that, but this in, in, insane amount of plaque psoriasis all over his scalp. Right. I mean, it, no, mu- no, no, no. To, to add insult to injury, you 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 wipe away you wipe away the hair, and now and now you place on prominently on the scalp, uh, you know, extending to the forehead, um, uh, red scaly plaques, out of which grow hair. So right. the only hair that, that 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 is growing is from is from red scaly plaques. And, and, and it is, it's really, uh, it is, it's tough. It, it, it really is tough. And, 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 you know, the psoriasis aside, as, as you point out, you know, much of, much of what you see, and, and you don't think of this when you look in the mirror every day, but, but your eyebrows and your eyelashes, they figure in to your self-image. You may not, you may not think of it. Uh, and if somebody were to have you draw yourself, guaranteed you would draw eyebrows and eyelashes. You may again, you may not think of it, but but it is a prominent part of the way you see yourself. That's right. Uh, and and so so he's sitting there. I notice that he has alopecia universalis, and I um, you know I I say you know you know are you certainly you're aware of that? Oh yes, you know I am. You know I. Had alopecia areata starting when I was two, and and um, Spencer, as you point out, you know, kind of went through life, you know, from day to day, week to week, not knowing was he going to wake up uh, one day or the next with uh, with another patch of hair loss right. uh, here or there, and then at the age of eighteen, at the age of eighteen, he loses all of his hair, so he he transitions to alopecia universalis, um, develops psoriasis. Um, and, and, uh, did he, and, did, did, he know, did he, I don't mean to cut you off, but did he discuss what his life was like, you know, because you must have, since you were treating him for a while, he, you know, he must have, um, opened up to you to some degree, what it was like having to deal with life with, you know, such a, a devastating disfigurement. And I don't care what anybody says, you know, when people say man up, it's just your hair. You know, I deal with mostly men who are dealing with androgenetic alopecia and some of these guys are suicidal. You know, I can't even imagine what it must be like, not only for a young child, but, you know, at the age of 18, when you're just starting out in life to all of a sudden lose every hair in your body. It's, I mean, you have to be a strong person to get through that. 
and and my patient is the is the strongest um, of of all. And and he, you know, I think probably very early on he 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 learned that uh, he just needed to persevere and and get through it. And so you know he was relatively, you know, it, it, again he had. I think I think at some point he stopped asking if there was something that could be done because because as all of these uh, patients understand, in very short time there is nothing that can be done. Right. And so after after you know a lifetime of it, uh, you stop asking the question and um, and so so I said but you know so in any case I, I looked at him and, and and I thought but wait a second we. We, we might have an opportunity here. We, you know, why why would I just undertake to treat uh, your psoriasis? And you know, there are several good psoriasis medications um, on the market now. But I thought, why why would I try to do that alone if I can bring a medicine to bear on both problems? Well, let's and, well, let's talk about that connection. I think it's important for people to understand, you know, how you were able to make that connection. Well, you know, the connection was made, um, you know, my practice as a dermatologist uh, really kind of focuses on folks with uh, uh, with refractory, you know, often uh, uncommon uh, and refractory skin disease. And so, so you, by necessity, by necessity, I need to draw on tools from from other parts of medicine to bring to bear on solutions for my patients and with that in mind i was aware of two things so so this was this was a very interesting confluence of uh, or a very kind of fun confluence of uh of events so so here i had a patient with with uh, plaque psoriasis. I had a patient with alopecia um, universalis. I was aware of uh, research from uh, Angela Cristiano's lab who was actually at Angela, Columbia, who An- you've had on your show before. She was actually the first person, my first guest back in 1998 when I was on WABC Radio. So yeah, she's 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 been in the trenches for a very long time. Oh no no she she it, it's it's really it's 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 really important to to understand that that Angela Cristiano uh, has has done just an enormous amount of work to help us understand it's amazing uh, what is happening in this spectrum of diseases and 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 being aware so. So again, I have a patient with psoriasis, a patient with alopecia universalis. I am I am kind of vaguely aware of some results from Dr. Cristiano's lab showing that the uh, mechanism uh, underlying this spectrum of diseases relies on uh, relies on CD8 T lymphocytes. Uh, and IL-15 signaling, uh, and that, and that she has or had given tofacitinib, this medication again borrowed from rheumatology for the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. She had treated mice with alopecia areata with this medication, and they'd regrown hair. And and so. So I had an FDA approved recently, just you know, 2012, recently FDA approved drug. I had knowledge of of uh, Angela Cristiano's results in mice, and I had a patient with plaque psoriasis and alopecia universalis, and the plaque psoriasis gave me an opportunity to prescribe. This medication, because this tofacitinib is uh, has has been through several clinical trials, um, most recently, as of I think early this year, showing that it has uh, some efficacy in the treatment of psoriasis, and and so 
so I thought to myself, well, why don't I try to why don't I try to argue to his insurance company to to treat his psoriasis with tofacitinib in the hopes that I could actually treat both of his problems at once. Right. And that's what that's that that that, that was the idea that happened, you know, in those kind of five minutes uh, in the room uh, with him. Uh, the moment we met. But I mean, just, just that, uh, you know, revelation, just that thought process has completely changed this young guy's life. Yes. And, you know, I know that it's only one patient. Everyone is like cautiously optimistic. How, you know, are we going to be able to reproduce this? Or are you going to be able to reproduce this in, in other patients? But I mean, theoretically, there's really no reason why you wouldn't, especially if you know, I guess it's thought that uh, alopecia totalis universalis uh, and areata basically work in the same way or have the same mechanism uh, in in everybody. You know, Correct. so it's not like there's very varying uh, mechanisms. So there's no reason why, if you were able to treat this guy successfully, that we couldn't do this across the board. I think the big question is going to be um, the potential for adverse side effects from the drug. And how is that going to kind of play into the model? So, you know, I, I think the the question very naturally arises. Uh, you know, will this will this be uh, become a treatment for all for this whole spectrum of diseases? I again, this is it's super important to emphasize. This was not luck. This was this was by design. Right. I I, I did I did not give this. This this patient of mine, tofacitinib, you know, in the hopes that I would treat his psoriasis, no, no. and it happened. To, it, this is this is by design. I have there, to tell you, just listening to it, science just listening to, to it gives me it. goosebumps because I, I I it's it's such an exciting um, breakthrough. It's such such an exciting event in the world of hair loss. And I, I just don't think, you know, I saw the way the mainstream media covered it. And it's just so lackluster. It's, it's, it's okay. This is just the way that, you know, that it has to be covered in the news. I just don't think they understand the impact that this is going to have on so many millions of lives. That is right. That is right. It, it is th – this, this result is going to be reproduced. This, this, this finding is going to change the game for folks with with this spectrum of disease, um, and you know, getting back to your earlier point about side effects, absolutely. Every time you put a pill inside your body, uh, you have to you have to be cautious and, and considerate. Of Look, I've been I've been on, I've been on finasteride for over twenty years. There are people who are so scared of the drug they won't even you know they won't even touch it. But in my case, it's been extremely beneficial, and I've had no adverse side effects, at least that I'm aware of. Right. So you know right. you have to be willing to take the risk, I guess. Right, for for for, for sure, and and but 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 it, it raises though it raises a uh, an interesting uh, consideration, and that is that is you know not everybody needs not everybody would need a pill. Right. You know, if you have alopecia universalis, then then I think yeah, you you probably would want to take uh, a pill, uh, but. But let's imagine now. Let's imagine now that we can formulate this uh, medication as a cream, as a topical therapy. Why? It, again, you know, if you have ten spots of 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 hair loss throughout your scalp, I, I, it would be very possible that you could simply put a liquid solution in your scalp every day to regrow and to maintain. Uh, that hair regrowth. You may not need a pill, right. and so, 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 really, the next step needs to be formulation uh, and testing of uh, topical delivery of this medication. Because all of a sudden, the question of side effects, while they don't go away, they certainly, they certainly become much less, um, uh, much less uh, dramatic. Right. Right. Well, you're not getting as much of the drug uh, into your system systemically. That's right. Yeah. That's right. This pill, I mean, I've never seen regrowth like this kid had. I mean, this guy now has a completely full head of hair, not to mention, uh, from what I'm reading, his eyebrows, his eyelashes, his body hair is all, all grown back. Now, do you Complete. think Now, do you think that this 
I mean, I'm sure one concern may be that how, how long would this last? Will the hair continue to cycle normally as long as he's on this medication? And is it something that will eventually, um, you know, will he become uh, resistant to the medication eventually? I don't think there is good reason to imagine that that would be the case. Uh, okay. It is really what is what is at play in the the mechanism underlying uh, these disorders uh, is uh, is this interleukin fifteen mediated uh, recruitment um, of 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 immune cells to the hair follicle, which subsequently subsequently you know basically kind of dissolve uh, the, 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 the hair follicle. Um, and, and, and there's no, there's no clear reason to think that, that this is a medicine that you would become immune to at some point. Right. Well, but as far as side effects are concerned, I mean, and I guess, you know, you're new to this as well. I mean, I guess it's possible if people are suffering with uh, significant adverse side effects that maybe even intermittent therapy may be something where people can cycle on and cycle off. Um, oh, oh, Spencer, I, I don't think that they're I, – I, I think that I, – I, to to say that somebody needs to be on this medication day after day, week after week, month after month in order to – in order for this effect to occur – uh, again, I cannot. I, I cannot say that that's not the case, but it may very well be. In the same way, right? In the same way that we treat people with alopecia areata, somebody comes in with three or four spots of hair loss, we inject with uh, we inject with steroid, right. and they go on their merry way, and they're fine for six months or ten months before another spot emerges. Right. Uh, it may very well be that somebody can take this medication for a month, two months, and be on their merry way, and 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 that you you know you could imagine tailoring regimens to to individuals. You know that this person is going to need one month every six months. Yeah, that, uh, or I mean, it it's... may just be that they need one five milligram tablet every three days. Again, until until that data until that data is available, uh, we're we're not going to have that answer. But but I I. I think that this this result is really hopeful. It is really hopeful, uh, and it will de- be duplicated. the 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 question is only going to be what are the parameters uh, that uh, that that need to be uh, you know kind of obeyed uh, for for you know kind of you know fifty patients on the on the whole, you know, is it going to be what what will be the dosing regimen necessary right. for this this condition? Well the the truth is it's FDA approved. There are going to be dermatologists out there who are going to obviously find out about this finding and, and the drug will probably be prescribed off label to the got to the people who are very desperate to to give it a shot. I mean I don't know um you know uh how comfortable doctors are going to be prescribing this drug at this point. But the truth is, when this um, news came out, we were bombarded uh, through the American Hair Loss Association, through the International Alliance of Hair Restoration Surgeons, and through the Ball Truth. I mean, the email boxes were just completely full. And that's why I reached out to you guys so quickly. I was actually, you know, I, I woke up even before I saw the news, and I'm like, I couldn't believe the amount of email that we had. So there are people who are going to be scrambling to get their hands on this drug. There's thought to be an inflammatory effect with male pattern baldness as well, besides a DHT connection. Do you think that uh, this drug may help with common androgenetic alopecia, male and female pattern hair loss? So the way I think about that is, is while, uh, you know, again, it, it goes back to, uh, you know, this specific patient, and and I, I very specifically, I very specifically gave him this medication because I knew I knew what the I knew what the science had told us. Right. Um so so getting, you know, around to that question of male pattern baldness or female pattern baldness and, and whether or not this might affect that condition, I I while I would not hazard a guess yet as to whether or not tofacitinib will 
will sufficiently or, or successfully treat that condition, it gets back to an earlier point where if we can show that we can deliver this medication to the hair follicle in a topical formulation, what would keep us and, and, and that that topical formulation were, was, was useful for the treatment of alopecia universalis or alopecia areata, what would keep us from, 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 from trying it in male pattern uh, baldness? It just, it, it, so, so that, that, the ability to, to try that, I, I don't think is, well, I, I, I hope anyways, is, is not far away. Um, and, and, and I think, I think that, uh, you know, the, these findings will hopefully, you know, kind of spur, uh, increasing interest in this problem and increasing interest in, in this pathway. Uh, and, and maybe we will find that there are, uh, connections. Well, the common tru- connections. The, the, the truth is, and I think that's amazing, and that's amazing news for uh, people with uh, common androgenic alopecia. But there is this whole uh, kind of gray market movement online, and there are thousands of guys and women who have been experimenting with different medications. My fear is that uh, they're going to get their hands on this drug. I don't. I don't want to name the brand name. I don't want to give them, uh, you know, make it easier for them. But they're going to get their hands on this drug, and there's going to be young guys who are going to start, you know, buying it from, you know, different online pharmacies. And I just want to to make sure that, you know, w- right now we don't know if there's a connection. So I don't right. want these kids to start popping these pills. Well, no, 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 no. That, I, that is that is everybody has to understand that 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 you know this is this is this is the beginning. It's it's hopeful. It's beyond hopeful, but. But we have to be patient. We have to be patient. I don't think that the data, I don't think that these opportunities are necessarily even that far away. But, but we have to be patient and we have to, we have to move through this, uh, you know, cautiously and safe, safely. Uh, and, and, and absolutely nobody should be experimenting. Nobody should be experimenting on their own. Uh, the medication is a, po- a potentially potent medication and and should never be purchased uh, on the black market. Um, it really uh, no it, these results are hopeful they're 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 just interesting they're they're going to change the lives of of countless people but but you know there is data that is not far away and we just have to we just have to patiently wait. Uh, for that data to emerge. Well, let me ask you about a timeline. What do you think the timeline, the potential timeline for a topical treatment to be put on the market? I mean, the drug is already approved uh, for one application, and it's approved orally. So it shouldn't be that take that long to push through if you guys kind of get the green light to, to move forward. I, I am uh, encouraged by your words, and I certainly – I am – trying uh, diligently and have been trying diligently to um, to get a topical formulation to use in uh, folks with uh, with alopecia areata and and totalis and universalis well if the, dr- uh, if the drug company so said, needs it's, any it's, it's it's possible it's it will take it will take uh, it may take some clever so, 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 some some clever science uh, to make it happen. It's it's a big molecule, uh, and uh, delivering it across the skin uh, may be may be tricky. But again, if if resources and interest is brought to bear on the problem, you know, I, I think I think everything is possible. Um, uh, just as I think, just as I think. You know, we're now seeing for the first time that this is possible. Something that ten years ago we would not have thought could be done. I think that the I think that the next steps are small in comparison. 